outlet that I want to extend. Um, it's always been terrible, but after I added this slat wall in front of it, it also made it somewhat inaccessible. I figured I'd try to fix both problems at the same time. I always have the same ritual whenever I'm doing electrical work. I will first take my multimeter and check when the power is on that the voltage is 120. Then I go and turn off the power. Then I come back and using the exact same multimeter in exactly the same setting without changing anything, I verify that now the power is zero. I found this to be a lot safer in the long run and just helps eliminate some mistakes and not really get zapped as many times. Removing the old cover is pretty straightforward. Um, you can see really in what rough shape it is after that point. Um, actually getting the outlet out itself though was a lot harder than I thought it would be. For some reason the screws on there were just really stripped and or there was kind of a combination of stripped and not stripped and that they would spin freely but at the same time I wasn't able to just pull them out. So I used a combination of power tools and hand tools and eventually I just had to stop the video and just kind of yank it out. Here's where you see that outlet is in really rough shape. I just went and cut everything off, got out the power back, went and cleaned it off. And here's where I'm going to connect it to the new wiring. I stripped them all to just maybe about a half an inch or so, and then got out my new wiring, which is THHN wiring. Yeah, technically speaking, I might have been able to use Romex in this case, and that would have been cheaper, but I guess I already had the THHN from a previous project. And I know for certain that that absolutely can work inside of a, a conduit. I'm not really sure if Romec is allowed to be used in liquid type conduit or not. I've gotten conflicting reports if it's allowed to be used in PVC and in EMT. And so I imagine there's conflicting reports with the liquid type as well. Whatever, since I had the THHN, I'm going to just use that and it's going to work fine. So yeah, spliced it up, tucked it all in. Next step is to actually put on the cover. I went and searched for the, something like this for quite a while before I realized that, oh wait, these lamp holder ones have a threaded on there that you can actually thread a half inch conduit onto. That works pretty great. I went and got the one that had three holes because I figured the side hole, which is about 45 degrees, is going to sort of point me in the right direction or at least start to. And that means I wouldn't actually have to get another type of a connector. I could use just straight 90 degree. This is the first time I've ever used a liquid tight stuff, and that's actually pretty slick. That's a regular connector. You just unscrew the cap, kind of slide it onto the conduit. The conduit then just snaps into the other part, and then when you tighten the cap, there you go. You have a watertight connection. Very, very slick. No need for any tools at all for that. Next step was I started to actually put the wiring in, but noob. I actually want to cut it first. This is another thing where it's a lot easier to use this than the EMT or the PVC. Because you don't need any special tools to cut it even, just a regular utility knife. It cuts very, very easily. So, yep, threaded it through, went and screwed it in, and uh, there you go. I used galvanized screws to attach this new box to the uh, slat wall since that's pressure treated lumber. Then I went and attached a 90 degree connector to the back of that, which has been screwed on. It was around this time that I discovered that it was about two inches too long, that conduit. So rather than doing it properly and just backing everything out, I just went and cut it in place, being very carefully not to nick the wires. Um, yep, and I did it properly. There wasn't any connections there. Here's where I kind of screwed up a little bit though. I went and forgot to put the um, connector onto the existing conduit. Oops. So yeah, I did need to back that part out at least and slide it onto the conduit so I was able to connect it. Once I did that, it was trivial to actually connect everything up properly. I normally wire outlets in parallel so that if one of them fails that the other one can keep working. And yeah, I've had outlets fail in the past. This time I decided to just do it serially. And not really decided, I just did it serially. I can't say I really had any particular reason for that. Unlike switches, outlets have to be wired up in a particular order. There is a power terminal and there is a ground terminal. Now the way I remember which is which is by recognizing that there's always going to be a brass terminal, always going to be a silver terminal. The brass terminal starts with a B just like the black wire does. So brass is black and I always connect those up. 
The rest of the wiring is pretty straightforward. I did big tail the grounds together just to make them a little bit easier to attach to the outlets. There's no easy way to serialize the grounds from one outlet to the other. What's unique about all this setup is that normally after you wire up the outlets, you unscrew them into the box. But if you're doing a weatherproof one, what you need to do first is actually put the gasket in between the outlets and the actual box. And then you screw through the gasket. You leave the screws about a quarter of an inch proud too at this point because the waterproof cover actually has keyhole slots that fit over the screws and fit into place that way. And that's it. A quick trip to the circuit breaker to turn back on the power and I, all I have to do is verify that I have 120 volts in each of the outlets. One final bonus shot of the finished product plus a little bit of a look at the unholy mess that I create whenever I'm working on electrical stuff. Goodbye!